Welcome to Speed Learning English, your podcast for smarter and more professional English. Hello, Richard. Hello, Sven. Nice talking to you. Nice talking to you. Have you been to a restaurant recently? Well, as you know, with um, with the COVID restrictions and with the order for everyone to shelter, um, it's quite difficult to attend a restaurant, but uh, pre-COVID, um, we all can remember these fun and amazing times where we were allowed, or it was possible in that sense, uh, to go to a restaurant, yes. Okay. And what kind of restaurants do you like? What Are you saying restaurant or restaurant? How do you pronounce it? How well, that's tomatoes, tomatoes. Um, <laughs> Uh, at the uh, end of who, the sang, who sang this song? I say potatoes and you say potatoes. Who sang that song? Do you remember? Uh, uh, you've, you have, you've spotted a blind spot. I can't, I don't, I'm not able to remember. Uh, okay, we, we'll find out later and um, we'll get this information for the next episode maybe. Okay, so what, what kind of, of restaurants do you prefer when you go to a restaurant? Well... As of late, I have um, found myself in, in, a, in a situation where I'm in a relationship. So um, my old bachelor days are gone. <laughs> and um, I kind of like um, restaurants that's not high class. I'm not in that tax bracket right now. But, um, but I think that's uh, more than a fast food uh, restaurant that I formerly used to um, tend to every every now and then. But as of now, I think it's more quite ambient. If you ask me the, uh, what kitchen style, it's more or less Asian, um, Italian. And believe it or not, the German kitchen is uh, still one of my favorite. The German kitchen is quite rich because we have a lot of vegetables. We have a lot of meat forms. Um, I mean, it's very meat, um, how do you say, uh, in German we say fleischlastig, it's uh -huh. meat focused maybe. Uh, and uh, mainly, it's mainly based on food or meat heavy. Meat heavy, yes. And uh, I mean, the more you come to the south, to Bavaria, for example, the more meat you have. And uh, it's sometimes quite difficult for people who, who are vegetarians or even vegans to find something attractive. And more and more um, restaurants here in, in our area start to adapt on that. So they, they have a, an extra card for vegetarian and vegan or they mark uh, the meals with a nice plant behind the the description of of the meal okay so if you want to book a table in a restaurant and you phone the restaurant let's say um you are having a celebration or you want to invite some friends for a nice dinner and you phone your restaurant of your choice and the day this podcast episode will be published we hopefully are able to go to restaurants. So uh, we record this in February 2021 and uh, it will be published in maybe March or April. So we hope that people can go to restaurants because it's a very important socializing place. How would you book a table, Richard? Um, so... Um, as of today, you can use technology, or you can. There are several apps that you can use to um, book a table. So there is, it's a non-verbal way of booking a table, a technological way. Richard, we are we are having a podcast for people to motivate them to speak English. We don't want to tell them how to use apps. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. But we have to, we have to, we have to tell them all the options and then tell them why uh, the verbal option is the best one. You're right. You're perfectly right. Indeed. <laughs> so then you have the verbal way of booking a table and then you just ring the restaurant and 
the person at the reception will pick up the phone and say hello and introduce the restaurant, hopefully properly. And then you will just um, say that you have, uh, want to book a table um, for then the amount of people you want to book it for and the time. I think this information is certainly enough for the receptionist because you are not the first and certainly not the last one to call at that uh, for that day. So um, surely she or he will know what to do with the information. And then afterwards, you have to also give your name. So it's under the name of Richard, for example. That's and then right. you would say Sorry, um, a table for please, uh, for two please, in my case with my with my girlfriend. Okay. And if you're... If your name, for example, your surname is a little bit complicated, you also have to be able to to spell your name maybe. So if somebody has a, um, a name that is quite exotic, uh -huh. or maybe it doesn't it doesn't sound very um, very common, then it might be necessary to spell the name. So spelling one's name or email address is always always important so that you can spell your name in any language you speak yes indeed mm -hmm. when when i went to to the netherlands last year um i wanted to book a table and by the way you say booking a table it's not to make a reservation or res reserving a table the correct phrase is to book a table isn't it Yes, indeed. So um, to make a reservation is very uh, German heavy um, mm -hmm. in that sense. But um, you can you can um, see English speaking countries, not mainly England, but English speaking country using a term um, to to make a reservation. But I think the most safe way to have a universal accept acceptance and understanding of what you want and mean is to use um, booking a table, yes. I think maybe the reason why, especially if you see um, if you see this on websites, make a reservation, the, this, the word reservation is international. We have Reservierung in German, we have reservation in English, we have reservation in French, we have reservation in Spanish, uh, reservazione in Italiano. So a lot of international audience will understand what to do when they, they see reservation. Whereas book a table or book here um, requires the knowledge of that English word. So maybe that's that's the reason why. Okay, and also another reason is um, English country uh, countries that are um, um, not heavily, but in some way impacted by the uh, French language, as you mentioned before. Um, so some African nations that speak English are most of the time um, heavily influenced by the French language. Then obviously Canada, um, obviously mm. um, influenced by the French language, but the Americans, for example, have um, a tendency to um, avoid or yeah indeed avoid this um influence of the french language uh, 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 in their language even though at some times you see them um using french words without any context and then it kind of uh updates their 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 their, their conversations so maybe But indeed, it's, 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 uh, you need these influences uh, in your language to to understand it yes Yeah, and uh, using French phrases makes your your language sound chic, maybe. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, and when I when I booked this table in in the Netherlands, they were asking me something I didn't understand because I never heard about that before. I mean, I, I made the booking in Dutch, so it was quite. Um, difficult for me to understand but then we find out they wanted to know how many households we were so this was in during the first um, corona lockdown where the restaurants in the netherlands were allowed to to remain open but only one household per table was permitted so when you were booking the table you had to announce how many households were 
involved in your um, booking. So this was quite challenging also. I hope you 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 were um you were there with only one household. <laughs> of course, of course. I have a very big family, it's just one household. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Richard. Um thank you very much for this insight into how to book a table or make a reservation in a restaurant. And uh, in the next episode, I would like to talk with you about invitations in a private household, for example, birthday invitations or invitations for somebody's, uh, in some countries, you celebrate the day of your name very, very intensively, or maybe Easter, Christmas, Ramadan, and other festivals. Okay. Um, by the way, we were talking about potato, potato, tomato, tomato. And this is from a song. Um, it's, it's named Let's Call the Whole Thing Off. And it's um, performed by Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong. And this typical, I say potato, and you say oh, potato. Indeed, yes. This is this yeah. typical Louis Armstrong voice. By the way, Louis Armstrong was not the guy who was landing on the moon. This was somebody else. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Richard, thank you very much. Thank you, Sven. And in the spirit of this podcast today, I'm going to use a French um, saying for goodbye and say au revoir, my friend. Au revoir, my friend. <laughs> <laughs>